Good evening, dear friends. This is the first recording in a new place. I'm in Italy. I'm in Milan. I just had my first Shabbos with guests at my beautiful apartment in the center of Milan. And, of course, a Tubishvat Seder, which was beautiful. And the desire to do, the desire to be part of, the desire to fulfill doesn't go away because I'm tired and exhausted. Had a phenomenal masterclass here in Milan, three days with very, very special people, very special work, full, full days, extremely, extremely powerful and really the beginning of a new academy in Italy and basically I have to tell you that I'm very very excited about all the new prospects here. This is not a new conversation. This conversation is quite a while. I've lived in Italy eight and a half years, many years ago, and then I thought I would never come back. But Hashem obviously has other plans, and here I am again. And the interesting thing, of course, is always that the Rebbe tells us that we should live with the Parsha of the week. And the Parsha of this week is Beshalach. <laughs> it couldn't be more oriented toward voice, toward my work, toward my name, and toward everything, basically, that I, as a human being, stand for. And so the idea of working and living with the Parsha is absolutely and completely appropriate, but it always is, and every week there is always something extraordinary. Here we are, the Jewish people, leaving slavery, leaving Egypt, and finding ourselves surrounded, water, the Sea of Reeds, in one place, right in front of us, and in back of us, here are the Egyptians, with their hordes following us. And there we are. We've just seen incredible miracles, 10 plagues, smiting of the firstborn. And where is God? In a moment's time, everything that was, that showed us the extraordinary power of Hashem, is forgotten because, again, we're afraid. Again, we find ourselves in problematic situation, and again, we are afraid. Not very much has changed, has it? 
And the more you study Torah and the more you study Kabbalah and the more we talk about this, we realize that what was is. And our fears that we had are our fears today. And our enemies that we had are our enemies today. And our doubts that we have are our doubts today as they were then. And Kabbalah is very, very, very clear on all the conversations that are going on in this Parsha and we find that ultimately the words of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai and the companions are the words of today. What does it mean, I will rain bread from heaven for you? And Rabbi Shimon says, it was indeed heavenly food emanating from the sphere called heaven. But the sons of wisdom, namely the students of Torah, derived their nourishment from a still higher region the sphere of wisdom, as it is written, wisdom keeps alive its owners. And Rabbi Elazar asks, why are those who study Torah more frail than ordinary men? Why are they sick? Why do they suffer? And Rabbi Shimon replies, that is a good question. And the answer is it follows. Ordinary food, which the majority of people are nourished with, is constituted of the, am the elements of heaven and earth and is therefore of a gross material quality. The unleavened bread, which is what they took with them when they left Egypt, emanated from the sphere of judgment and was somewhat subtler in quality. But the manna, which rained from heaven, was still finer food emanating from the sphere of heaven and was assimilated by the soul more than the body. Angels read. But the food of those absorbed in Torah nourishes only the soul and the spirit, but not the body coming as it does from the sphere of wisdom from the highest and most glorious supernal region. Hence, it is hardly to be wondered at the wisdom children that they are more frail than other men, for they do not eat the food of the body at all. Truly, wisdom keeps alive her owners. Blessed is that body which can derive benefit from the food of the soul. This is difficult stuff, but very, very understandable. When you're involved in study, and when you're involved in high spiritual pursuit, and when you are 
giving of what your vessel has received from Hashem, then that which is material and that which is body is a very secondary pursuit, but we have to live and we have to do everything we can to sustain our bodies. But if you want to study and sustain your body at the same time, there is a difficult balance to be found, and it is always a balance. This Parsha is full of incredible and beautiful visualizations. You see in front of you the sea splitting open. Hashem made a deal at the creation of the world that when he asks the sea, the depth and the waters to open so the Jewish people can walk through and then close again on the top of the enemy. The sea does what Hashem asked and the whole world was witness to what happened. We see these miracles, or we read about them on Shabbos, and we don't realize that these miracles are just part and parcel of every moment of our life. We just finished to be shut. The miracle of rebirthing continually, day in and day out, Hashem is rebirthing the world. Every second of every day is a process of allowing nature and our souls to rebirth ourselves. Every moment, the world is being sustained by heavenly mana. And what is raining down from heaven are the blessings for us to be able to continue our life every day. A very, very interesting comment here. And it says in the Parsha, And Moses said unto them, Let no man leave of it, meaning the manna, until the morning. Rabbi Yudah said, Every day the world is blessed through that superior day, the seventh. For the six days receive blessing from the seventh, and each dispenses the blessing so received on its own day, but not on the next. Hence the Israelites were commanded not to leave of the manna till the morning. The sixth day has more blessing than the rest of this day. As Rabbi Eliezer said, the Shechina prepares the table for the king. Hence, the sixth day has two portions, one for itself and one in preparation for the joy of the union of the king with the Shechina. 
for the Divine Presence, which takes place on Sabbath night, and from which all the six days of the week derive their blessing. For that reason, the table has to be prepared on the Sabbath night, so that when the blessings descend from above, they may find something on which to rest, as it were, for no blessing rests on an empty table. Those who are aware of this mystery of the union of the Holy One with the Shrina on Sabbath night consider, therefore, this is the time most appropriate for their own marital union. Everything is clear. No blessing rests on an empty table. Everything is written. Those who say that Kabbalah is too difficult to understand, listen, because the things that we share are beyond understanding. I'm using, of course, the Sonchino Zohar in Parsha's Mishalach. And this Parsha is full of the most unbelievable miracles, the greatest miracles that we've seen in our relationship so far with Hashem. He provides and He shows us couple of days after we leave the Sea of Reeds, where we sang one of the great, if not the greatest song of the entire Torah, and Miriam leads the women, and brings enormous joy to the people. In the same moment, we're in the desert, for three days in the desert, we don't have water. This is the people who saw the miracles that Hashem makes that I start complaining. Why you take us out? Why are we supposed to die here? But you just saw what Hashem did for you. Don't you think that the Hashem that did the splitting of the sea, that did taking out of Egypt is going to provide for you? without your complaining, but with trust and with faith and with belief and with love. What happens to a person? All of a sudden, everything turns around and you forget. Hashem will never forget that Amalek, the root of Amalek is Safek, doubt, attacked the Jewish people when the rest of the world trembled at his awesome power. Amalek attacked And Moshe Rabbeinu 
says to Yoshua, bring them in. It's time. Here, it's time to fight. And there are times to fight. And there are times to stand up. And there is time when the Jewish people can't be still, can't be quiet, can't be complacent, can't wait for anyone to do their bidding. At the end of the Parsha, it says, the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Rabbi Yudha said, There never was a generation of men, nor will there ever be in this world without this evil seed. And the Holy One, blessed be He, carries on His war against it. Of such it is written, Let the sinners be consumed out of the earth, and let the wicked be no more. Bless thou, O Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. How are we to understand this out of beauty, out of grace, out of love for the Jewish people, Hashem has an enemy, and we have an enemy. And from generation to generation, it will be the same. And Hashem told us, time and time and time again, wipe them out. And we don't. And so they come up. In each generation, they come up. And the problems don't go away, will never go away. Not because they can't be made to go away, but because we, the Jewish people, do not listen to what Hashem wants from us. We have constant complaints. We have constant reason why we don't do what he wants. We constantly try to assimilate to the point where we become annihilated from our learning. We walk away from our responsibility, we become someone else. We want to become someone else. We want to find an easy way out. It's never worked. It will never work. And until the Jewish people decide and understand and accept that Torah and only Torah is the way and only Hashem and His Torah are the way for the Jewish people to live, there will be no peace for us. 
because we are Hashem's children. We are Hashem's flock. And we need Hashem to give us what He promised us. But in return, He wants our obedience. He wants our love. And He wants a home, His home in His holy land. And that is what we need to do to give him what he wants. Next week, we're going to be talking about Itro, the high priest of Midian, Moses' father-in-law, a guy a non-Jew. And what is very, very interesting and what I see no matter where I go in the world is that non-Jews have great respect for Jews who are Jews. Not Jews who are assimilated wherever they are. The Jews who remain, who are proud, and who understand why, and who are ready to share why. We are the lamplighters of the world. I'm traveling with a Torah and going into places with the Torah dedicated to the souls of the six million. And there I will present myself, my people, my Torah. And there I will ask Hashem to open the hearts and the minds and the souls of those to whom I'm speaking. You've got mail. Have a beautiful week. Revive and rejoice in the revitalization of nature and appreciate the fact that Hashem gives us the fruits of His labor so they can become our sustenance. Shavuot Tov, a beautiful week, and Bezrat Hashem, please God, We'll see each other next week. Shalom. From Italy. <laughs>